find a quiet spot, perhaps outside or indoors with a candle lit. You can pause the video while you find your sacred space in which to pray. We acknowledge that the land on which the Cognoscene Community Church sits is the traditional territory of several Indigenous peoples. The shores and waterways of the Georgian Bay are the traditional domain of the Anishinaabeg First Nations peoples to the north and the Huron Patoon Wyandot to the south. The bay was a major Algonquian Huron trade route. This territory is covered by the Williams Treaties. Wherever we are today, we acknowledge that the land on which our homes are built and on which each of us worship was occupied by Indigenous peoples long before we arrived. We acknowledge this in order to better commit to the work of repentance and reconciliation. Sit in a comfortable but alert way, back straight, both feet on the ground, arms relaxed, palms open. Close your eyes if you feel comfortable doing so, or look at the scenery in front of you. Begin by becoming aware of your breathing. and become aware of how your body is sitting, beginning with your feet, then working your way up your body to your head. Keep breathing in deeply. When you feel calm and centered, begin your prayer time. Welcome to our time of worship. I invite you to pray the prayers with me. All the words you will need will be on the screen. Call to worship. Holy God, breathe through me. Forgiving Christ, cleanse me of my sins. Holy Spirit, renew a right spirit within me. Opening prayer. Let us pray. God, who in Jesus stills the storm and soothes the frantic heart, Bring hope and courage to us as we wait in uncertainty. Make us equal to whatever lies ahead. Give us courage to endure what cannot be avoided. For your will we hope and wholeness. You are God and we need you. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St. John. When evening came, 
Jesus' disciples went down to the lake, got into a boat, and started across the lake to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The lake became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the lake and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going. The Gospel of Christ Psalm 145, verses 10 to 18. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power, to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desires of every living thing, the Lord is just in all his ways, and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 1 to 21. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given to me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the Gospel, who created all things so that through the Church the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. I pray, therefore, that you may not lose heart over my sufferings for you. They are your glory. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being, with power through his Spirit, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the Church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, for ever and ever. Amen. Here ends the lesson. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our Creator, our Redeemer, and the One who sustains us. Amen.
I'm a strong advocate for reading scripture in context. I dislike proof texting, where a phrase from scripture is pulled out of context to make a point. When one considers how in the New Testament to one's 21st century life, understanding the context of the first century world in which the author was writing, who the person was who wrote it, as well as the audience to whom they were writing is crucial. This is especially true of the letters that Paul writes. Sometimes Paul, as an author, can be quite long-winded and convoluted, and sometimes he writes in a rhetorical style that is quite different from our contemporary forms of correspondence. Pulling one or two phrases out of context can distort his original message. Though the lectionary would have us start the epistle reading from the third chapter of the letter to the Ephesians at verse 14, for this reason I bow my knees. I thought it would make more sense to start at the beginning of the chapter so that you could hear the reason to which he refers. Paul's reason for bowing down in deep reverence before God is the incredible grace and expansive inclusiveness of God. It is no wonder Paul feels such awe given his own personal experience of God's grace and inclusiveness. You may recall the account of Saul or Paul's conversion experience on the road to Damascus described in the ninth chapter of the book of Acts in which he is temporarily blinded. He goes from Saul hating and violently persecuting Christians to Saul, also known as Paul, who helps expand the Christian faith to the Gentiles. It is such a huge shift from his former way of thinking about and interacting with Christianity. The very people he had set out to persecute end up taking him in, help him to heal, protect him, and vouch for him when the Christians in Jerusalem are understandably wary of him. I think that his own experience of grace and inclusion allowed him to become more inclusive, welcoming Gentiles to share in prayer and religious practice in a way he never would have dreamed of doing prior to his conversion. Phrases that Paul chooses to use, such as the boundless riches of Christ and eternal purpose, reinforce this idea of the expansive inclusiveness of God's love for all people. His references to mysteries hidden for ages that are now revealed and to heavenly places are meant to break down the barriers of time and space, as does his phrase, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. Rather than there being a binary distinction between heaven and earth and those who dwell there, the words that he chooses makes it clear that there is no divide between heaven and earth. We are all part of God's family. The expansive inclusiveness of God's love for all people is then reflected in the beautiful prayer Paul prays for the Ephesian church. And though the prayer was originally written for the church at Ephesus, as is fitting where the theme is grace and inclusiveness, the words take on a broader application that transcends the time in which they were written. They are worth repeating in their fullness. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Allow these words to sink into you, to move past your head to your heart and to your soul. Allow that experience of the breadth, length, height, and depth of Christ's love for you humble you, awe you, 
amaze you and strengthen you. Come back to these words every time you need reassurance that you have a place in God's universe. And may your experience of the expansive inclusiveness of God's love allow you to show that same love towards others. I invite you now to call to mind all those for whom you wish to pray, for those in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Call to mind the needs of the world and your own needs. Let us pray. Gracious God of abundance, you feed the hungry from your hand and visit us in our storms. Hear your people as we pray for the whole world, saying, May we know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. Give to your church, O God, the power to comprehend the breadth and length and height and depth of the love of Christ, that your power at work within us may accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine. May we know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. Let our leaders and all in authority bow their knees before the Heavenly Parent, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name, that they may use their power justly, feed those who are hungry, and share your abundance with all your children. May we know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. In every place of hunger bring food, O God, in every place of poverty, bring abundance. In every place of terror, bring comfort and security. May we know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. Come to us in our stormy darkness and comfort us in our fears with your generous touch Heal those for whom we pray. You gather up the lives of all your children. Receive into your fullness those who have died. May we know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. Your people look to you for nurture and healing, O loving parent. Fill our hungry lives with the abundance of your spirit, that we may be fruitful disciples of the one whose compassion reaches across all boundaries, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you now to take a moment to call to mind all those for whom you are thankful and the ways in which you see God working in your life. Prayer of Gratitude Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all you have done for us. 
We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his dying through which he overcame death, for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your Spirit, that we may know Christ and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. As Jesus taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Closing Prayer O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, May God hold you in the palm of his hand.